Here we are down in Lakeland, Florida, the first knife show of the year 2000, and we're in 2020. I can't even keep up with my years. But since the last episode, I've had a few health problems, but I'm back on the trail again. And I'm uh, just glad to be here. Uh, since volume one of uh, Tony Foster Pocket Knives, I've done a lot of water under the bridge and uh, sold a lot of knives, bought a lot of knives. I'm glad to be here. And with today, I have my son here with me. How you doing? He's going to be taking this over whenever uh, I'm give it up for good. I'm 85 now, going on 90. So see if we can make it. So here today we got a couple. Of, I've had a, by the way, I've had a lot of interest in the old this is the, the volume one of Tony Foster Roadshow Pocket Knives, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, this happening again. Um, I've had about how many thousand? How many thousand of these things? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand views. 20, views. And that's a lot, folks. Uh, here we have a couple of uh, one of the better, more popular case pocket knives. This is a, a 63, 94 and a half big cigar pattern. Those are very collectible, highly desired, and hard to find. This one I have in red bone, case double X red bone, 63, 94 and a half. And my son over here has a little very similar to it, but it's about a $2,000 difference in the price. Mine's a double X, his is a tested. That means it was made between 1920 and 1940. Mine's 1940 to 64. And uh, I just really appreciate all the... How would you identify that knife? Uh, it's a very collectible, big case. They call it a cigar. It's the biggest cigar pattern to make. Uh, case and this case is not the only person, only company that uh, manufactures this popular pattern. But uh, you just can't hardly find them. This is in red bone. That was in green bone. They're very, very nice knives, and they're hard to come by. And if you happen to run across one in mint condition, this is mine. It runs about four thousand. The one my son's holding over here runs up a couple of more thousand to about 6,000. You find a hold, you get a hold of one of these, you're a lucky man or a woman, if the case may be. So, I'll tell you what, the, I get these views. Tell me what you want to look up, talk about next, next uh, volume, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. And I've got just about any pattern that you can think of here. I've had a real good show down here in Florida, and uh, looking forward to moving on to Dalton, Georgia in March. We're gonna have another good show. All right. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Pastor. I think. No problem. Somewhere here, there's one of my cards, and it's got all my information on it, and you can contact me. And uh, I put out this price guide, and it's, it's the value of case pocket dives. And I, I revise it every three months, and the address is right on my card down there. And you can order this by mail or give me a call. I'm easy to get a hold of. Anybody that collects the old knives knows Tony Foster. So, do you want to identify these? Yeah. Let's identify them. Long pull, double X, tested stamp. Yeah, this is double X. Man. Exactly. So explain it to them. Well, how do, you, how do you tell that from a thirty-dollar knife? Well, you got to know your stuff. We mentioned these old knives; they're so expensive. This one's got the long pull, which is more desirable than this. But you be cut myself here. This is a short pull right here, and that's not as desirable. But these are made with long pull on the master blade, regular pull on the other two blades. Same thing tested. Not a nickel worth of difference. Just older and more expensive. And uh, I can't much think of anything else except uh, I know a little bit old pocket knives. And you, you give me a call at that number. 
I like to collect $100 bills. $100 bills. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. I like to collect, I actually like Remington knives a lot, but cases, cases right up there just a little out of my price range. <laughs> what, do you, what do you look for if you saw, saw a case on a, on a, on a, on a table? What would, what would you be looking for? Well, first thing you want to look for is if you see this long pool, you know it's an older knife because they quit making them at a certain time and went with a more advantageous pool further out on the blade because the long pool is up here and it's not easy to open. But they got smart and decided to put the pool further up and it would be easier to open the knife. That's one thing. And then you can look at the shield. that You change the shield over the years and that'll tell you around what year it should be. Once you look at that, then you kind of look the knife over, see if there's any cracks in the handles, see if the handles are right. Sometimes people change the handles because they get deteriorated and whatnot. So people will change the handles and of course they'll put some better handles on it and try to make more money. But that's the first thing. And then you kind of look down inside the knife and see if it's as clean inside as it is on the outside. Sometimes the outside's clean and it's dirty on the inside. The inside usually tells you what the outside should have looked like, but they've had it cleaned up. Small things, but all these things add up to a big difference in price and knowledge. Could you show us like an inexpensive one? An inexpensive one? Oh, get my little green, little stag 33 patterns right there. One on top. Now this is a cheaper one, right? This is a smaller knife. It's a newer knife. It's just stag. a small knife. Small knives usually bring less money than big knives. It's just the way time. it is. Okay. People want to pay for what they're getting. How do you tell it's new? You can tell it's new. You glance at it. Just tell. from the glance, you can tell if you know. But other than that, you just pull it open, look at the stamp, and the stamp will tell you around about when it was made. They changed the stamp over the years, and you know around about what year they changed the stamp. So that's what you go with for a guide. How did they change the stamps? Well, every, they changed the stamps over the years. They would use a certain stamp for maybe 20 or 30, 40 years, and then they would change it as the years changed. And then they would they have a whole new type of knife. So the stamps are how you tell the value and the age of the knife. This is a tested stamp made between 1920 and 1940. In 1940, they changed the stamp, and it was just double X's, no more tested on it. They used that up until 1964. And then in 1964, they had to put the country of origin, so they put a USA under this double X's. That's how you can tell the difference in ages. Okay. All right, guys, that was great. All right. Thank All right. you, sir. Glad Thank you, you stopped by.